Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good day and welcome to the show. Uh, now, here's the thing. I have a lot of camera troubles, and this is why you're seeing this picture in picture here, because I can see when this thing turns off on me. You know, right now I'm watching you. <laughs> I can see myself in the video there, but I can see the red button, and if that red button goes blank, I know it's turned itself off, and I'm watching you. Anyway, I'm <laughs> just joking, guys. I'm not really talking to a computer. But, I mean, the computers can frustrate us nowadays because the way they act up all the time with their software problems and issues. So, anyway, it's 11.55 on January 4th, 2023. Thank you for tuning in. Here I am. Listen, here's the article on here. Mad rush to build more electric vehicle factories. Where are the minerals? They got to build all these batteries too, you know. Each electric car has all these batteries. I am very much for somebody out there that can build us some sort of an electric vehicle. That's getting back to our the roots of what an automobile used to be. You know, back when uh, we had the Model Ts and stuff back in the old days, they they weren't like what we have now. What we have now, I call them Flintstone cars. Because they're really heavy. They weigh like three, 4,000 pounds. Great big, thick, heavy tires on them. Great big, thick, heavy rims. Great big, thick, heavy suspension and axles. Everything is just so heavy. The braking system, everything. But that's why they consume a lot of gas. And this is why they're trying to switch over to EV. But what if we got back to our roots? What if we were to make cars... And instead of, you know, you know how a bicycle, a bicycle supports your weight. But you know what a bicycle wheel weighs? Try picking up one of the tires off your SUV. Go to the mechanic service station next time they're servicing your SUV. And, just, and they got the tire off and lay in there. And just try to pick the thing up. It weighs as much as you. Right? But now go over to a bicycle and pick the wheel up. You can hold it between your fingers and you can pick it up. It weighs almost nothing. That supports your weight. Two bicycle wheels will support probably 400 pounds. But they're lightweight, and they can take quite a beating, too. The old cars in the old days, like Model Ts and stuff, they had spoked wheels. Motorcycles still have spoked wheels. They're much lighter and much stronger than, than what we're using on these Flintstone cars, what I call Flintstone cars. And why do you need to have 4,000 pounds of steel... To carry a 120 pound lady to do her shopping. You know, she's only going to get 10 pounds of groceries. The whole thing is 140 pounds or whatever, most. And you got 4,000 pounds of steel. Why do you need that? You, you can get away with something much smaller. So, what we need, we need electric vehicles, but we need them to build specifically a smaller, lightweight electrical vehicle, two seater with a trunk or a back seat that you could put stuff in that would be able to have probably only a thousand watts and a small battery, maybe the size of a car battery, but, but you know, mercury, not mercury, but uh, lithium, a small lithium battery, size of a car battery. You can charge it up the same way you charge the big electrical vehicles. But it only takes a thousand watts to run it, and would have a range of about say fifty to a hundred miles when it's charged. And you could just char plug charge it up in any ordinary outlet, anywhere, anywhere you could find an outlet, you could charge it up. Um, you know, and and so something like that, you can imagine the utility of it. You know, being able to get in, go anywhere you want to go within maybe a 50 or 100 mile radius. And you're protected because you're inside a vehicle. Protected from the elements, the rain, everything else. But you get the gas mileage of a bicycle. And not only that, make it so it doesn't cost as much originally to purchase. It can be great little commuters for in town and stuff. People that work jobs where they have to use their vehicle in town just to run across town. Have a top speed on the thing of, say, 40 miles an hour. Don't need to go real fast, you know. And and have, and they, and China makes all these braking systems now. They, you could have disc brakes on the thing, so it could stop fairly quickly. 
why not make it tubular steel frame you know you could even have seat belts inside it but forget about all this stuff like airbags and side door impact beams and all that kind of stuff let's get back to our roots on automobiles anyway I've talked enough about that we got to get into the markets today uh, we're gonna take a look at the silver price today it's, it's up 13 cents at 2409 today so far uh, let me see you gotta keep my eye on that camera yeah it's still running you better stay running <sighs> you son of a gun okay 2409 for silver let's check gold gold is 1858 Keep my eye on that camera. I'm watching you. <laughs> Don't turn off on me. <laughs> 1858. Okay, cryptocurrencies today. Uh, we are looking at 16,864. So right now, we're seeing Bitcoin take a little bounce. It's moving. It's starting to move a little bit to the upside. It's Bitcoin and Ethereum. Or two that are bouncing, the two main coins. 1253 for Ethereum. And 16,864 for Bitcoin itself. And so we're up about uh, 15, 20 billion up. We're at 821 billion. We were hovering around 800 billion there yesterday. Dow Jones Industrial Average today is up 260 points on the day so far. Now we're going to take a look at the. Uh, S&P 500, and it's up 46 points, which is quite a big move. That's over 1%, 1.22%, 3,870 on the day so far. Now, let's go and take a look now at crude oil, which is down $3.40, down 4.42%, 73.53. That's a lot. It's down a lot. Bonds and rates today. We're looking at uh, Treasury yields are dropping. Uh, the U.S. 30-year is at 3.8, and it's dropped 7.4 basis points, and the U.S. 10-year is at 3.7, and it's dropped 8.7 basis points. Now taking a look at the U.S. dollar index at 104.12 on the U.S. dollar index. Okay, let's see if we can get this over here and we'll expand this a little bit. You can see me a little bit better. <laughs> anyway, guys, I had a lot of camera issues yesterday. Uh, I'm using the same software, so I kept my eye on this thing. You see that big red button there? As long as that big red button's red and as long as it's saying 809, 810, or whatever, it means it's recording. So what was happening yesterday was... I was using this particular camera and uh, every time I'd be looking at my charts it would stop the recording. But the first time it stopped at two minutes and something and I did a 34 minute show. And then the second time it did it that later that day, you know, and I was about maybe five minutes in or something that just stopped recording for some reason. And so it messed me up twice so I don't trust it. Can you blame me? Anyway, seems like it's staying on today because I'm keeping my eye rate on it. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but I don't want to have to re-record my show over and over again. I mean, that's just a total waste of time. But anyway, so uh, we got the war over in Russia. And if you guys haven't heard about that, uh, I think it was on New Year's Eve, they used HIMARS to bomb some sort of a Russian... Uh, military barracks and the Russians I think are claiming under a hundred dead uh, so they're admitting that they blew up a whole bunch of soldiers but the Russians are furious right now and you know the week before that we had a whole bunch of attacks by Ukraine deep within Russian territory some of the attacks were almost as deep as Moscow itself on Russian military bases I think drones were an issue in these things uh, Russia's claimed very distinctly that if the Russian territory itself is attacked and and you know also they've annexed these regions in around Donetsk and down around Crimea 
those are considered now to be Russian citizens or whatever. They're considered to be, well, at least under Russian protection. And so Russia's not planning on pulling out of these regions anytime soon. They fight to the bitter end to protect their sovereignty, you know. And at the same time, uh, the United States keeps pushing in there. And the thing is, this is a turning into a never-ending cycle of war over there, but it can only last as long as the ammunition lasts, the, the conventional arm ammunition. And they're going through this conventional ammunition pretty quickly, both sides, not just Russia, but the United States and her, and her allies, uh, the defense contractors uh, over in these countries over here can churn out, I think, more ammunition than Russia can. They, they're a, they have the ability to obtain supplies needed to build more ammunition. I think Russia's limited on how long that they can continue with all this ammunition usage of, in a conventional form. They have limitations. They're going to run out. But if we take a look and we say, hey, you know, what ammunition does Russia have in plentiful supply that they haven't used yet? Uh... And that they've had, they've got sitting on the sidelines, ready to go. Well, you're, when it was a former Soviet Union, they built up a, a supply of, of of nuclear weapons that was unparalleled. You know, I think it was over sixty thousand thermonuclear weapons, enough to blow the world up many times over. And they still got a lot of them. You know, I think they've got uh, over six thousand or something. I haven't used any, you know, but how far are they willing to let this thing, whole thing push? Because neither side is going to give in at this point. I can't see the West giving in. I don't see Russia giving in. So it's a matter of time before we reach a certain point where they will, they, the people out there have to say, hey, you know, At what point do the people in the world, the, the actual honest, everyday, ordinary people like us, at what point do we say, hey, we, we've had enough of these officials in high places uh, saying uh, that they're going to build more and more weapons systems uh, capable of blowing us up, us up and our kids? Because even though they have these weapons aimed at other countries, eventually it's going to come back on you. The average ordinary citizen, because you launch the weapon, it goes over there, flies across the ocean, hits the other country, and then they launch theirs back at you. So at what point is the people going to wisen up and say, hey, you know what, do we really want to go there with these, with these uh, people that are in positions of authority that we let elect into office so that they can build more and more of these weapon systems that are weapons that can take out the world? Do we want this? Do we need this? It's gonna... It's, see, this is the way humanity is. They always look to somebody else to accomplish what they should be accomplishing themselves. They always look to a leader. They elect a leader. It's a herd mentality. It's like, you take a look at our teeth, for instance. An awful lot of our teeth are for chewing up straw or whatever, you know. I mean, they're like cattle teeth, a lot of our teeth in the back especially. But when you move toward the front, there's a couple teeth, on the, generally on the top, that are like canine type teeth. So we're a little bit of a cross between a herbivore and a carnivore. But we, we still have that herd mentality. And always looking to others. Now, what happens to a herd of sheep or cattle if they have that herd mentality? They always end up going up the ramp, down the sluice, into the slaughterhouse. And this is what the world leaders want. They want us to be have that herd mentality. They don't want us to step out of line and question what they're trying to do. And what are they doing? You just got to open your eyes and look. They're... They're building more nuclear weapons. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. We'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.